everybody. This is Adam Gusso, the good doctor on the campus of the University of Mississippi in Oxford, Mississippi. What you just heard there was the opening 12 bars um, of a version of Crossroads Blues that I recorded back in 2010. It currently has more than 3 million, 3 million hits on YouTube, which is kind of crazy because the guy who recorded it, I was playing drums at the same time and I was singing. He's only been playing drums for a year and he can't really sing. I've worked hard for the last nine years on my singing, but he can't really sing. Three million hits, why is that? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. And what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you. Actually, I'm gonna give away, there's a tab that I have to the opening 12 bars of Crossroads Blues. And I'm gonna do something I, I really almost never do because that tab took a long time to draw. I'm gonna give it away for at least uh, the first month or two. I may eventually decide I want to charge a buck or two for it the way I've been doing for years on it. But I'm going to give it to you guys and I'm going to show you right now exactly what I just did. Exactly. Okay. Are you ready? Now this is sort of an advanced lesson, but and I'm going to do it real slow. Um, let me just say a couple of things about it. So one of the things that's going on, especially in bars 9 and 10, is that I'm doing my own harmonica translation of what Eric Clapton did when he did Robert Johnson's, of course it's Robert Johnson's song originally, it was called Cross Road Blues. Three words, the original. Clapton recorded it as Crossroads, and I recorded it as Crossroads Blues. The crazy thing is, and I mean for a harmonica dude who's not a full-timer, if you go to YouTube and you put in the words Crossroads Blues, you get like you may, I think Robert Johnson's number one and I'm number two, and then comes John Mayer and Eric Clapton. It is crazy. So thank you harmonica players from around the world who happen to like the crazy thing I did nine years ago. I want to show you exactly what I was doing. Exactly. Now, first thing is, I think I recorded on a stock Honer Marine Band. This is actually a, a, a Joe Spires a custom Marine Band. It is, it's faster, um, but I could do it on a stock. I'm going to do it on this one, but I could totally do it on a stock harp. So don't think that I can't. Um, this one's a little bit, needs a little tuning. I need to send it to Joe. Yeah, the octave's a little... You know what? Maybe, maybe what I should do, since I do have a stock, and since it's a little out on that, maybe I should find that D. Here we go. I'm just going to, you know, Gusso, do it on the stock thing. Do it on the stock thing. All right. So, that's right. That's the stock. A little more metallic, a little faster. I'm not going to do the fast stuff. I'm going to break it down for you. So how does it start? So it starts on the two draw. This is a D harp. It starts on the two draw. Then I Now my way of playing involves tongue blocking. It also involves lip pursing. I am not a full-time tongue blocker. I'm not a full-time lip purser. In order to play what I've played on this, on this head, you need to do both. I'm just going to show you what I do. You adapt it. Make it work for yourself. I go from two draw lip pursed to three six blow. That's the first thing I do. And then I go to slide from three six blow to two five draw. And back to three six blow. Boom ba boom boom. Right? So one of the things that I found really useful when I'm trying to master something new is to break it down into small parts. So what you might do is just digest this one small part. Just like that. Now what do we add next? Well, look at what happens next. So you add, at the right time, you add the 2-5 draw and the 3-6 blow again. So remember the first part was well now you add ah okay 2 draw 3-6 blow 2-5 draw 3-6 blow then 2-5 draw 3-6 blow 2-5 draw to three draw with a little bit of the four thrown in and then back to two draw and that gets us through the first bar
That's the first bar and the first beat of the second bar. So that was the second bar. The second bar is a little different than the first because instead of doing that 2-5 draw to 3-6 blow back and forth thing, you're going to do a riff that goes... That's a very famous, it's a rick lick that I've tried to teach on, on other videos on this site, uh, excuse me, other YouTube videos, and um, it's a five note lick that goes four draw bend to four draw unbend to four draw bend to three draw to two draw. So bars one and two. And that's it. Let me do that again. I'm doing it nice and easy. And this is the tempo. You should not practice any faster than this. Obviously, I'm doing it at least 50% faster than that. Maybe, maybe twice as fast. I don't know when I'm actually performing it. It's really at a high tempo. Then repeat. Okay. Whoa, that's now that's tricky. What am I doing? I'm doing a lip purse, one one draw, one blow. And I jump up to four blow. One blow, four blow, three blow. To three draw with a little bit of bend, uh, bend and vibrato. To two draw. And now that's tricky. That's tricky. That's my own invention. I didn't steal that from anybody. I just made up something that I basically, uh, words of exig ex exigency. I made it up for out of pure exigency. It's something needed to happen there. And I thought, well, this will get me there. So what am I doing there? So one blow, four blow, three blow, three draw with a little bend and a little vibrato, to two draw to one draw, two draw to one draw to two draw whole step bend. And then one draw and one draw bend. Let me do that super slow. Can you hear the beat? Boom, 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 boom. And that gets me back to. So, what did I do there the second time? Bars five and six again. But let, let's do bars one through four. Now we're back to first beat of bar seven. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Now, pause for the cause. I, I, when I slow it down this much, sometimes I lose my way. <laughs> so what I do on bar eight is I simply repeat bar seven, setting me up to go down and do the really tricky riff that happens on bars nine and ten. So, bar seven and eight... So bar nine, it's 
it's really pretty easy. I think you can probably hear that if you've got any kind of chops at all. One draw, hit twice with your tongue, tongue it. All lip pursed. So I'm hitting it. I'm going up to the whole step in on two. Back to one draw, back to whole step in on two. On the last half beat, the upbeat of bar nine. And that's this is the trickiest riff for the whole thing. This was because I play blues guitar, and as a teen I was playing Clapton's, a little bit of Clapton's version of this. And I think it's that. That is a very distinctive riff from the Live Cream version of Crossroads. And all I did was rip it off. I, I figured out how to play, sort of play it on harmonica. This is one of the places that creativity can manifest. So when there's a lot of people who will say, you know, you guys got to go and create something yourself. Don't just rip off little Walter. Don't just do what's already been done. I say, amen. But you know, one of the ways of working, one of your creativity works is you don't figure out something for yourself. You go and you rip off something from somebody who's an instrumentalist other than your instrument. So as harmonica players, I like, I think we need to go to saxes and guitars in this case, rock blues guitar. So this is a place that this goes. <laughs> Now that's a cool riff. One blow, to two blow, to three blow. To three draw with a little bend, to two draw. Isn't that lovely? And then that really weird riff that I never would have done if I was just thinking like a harmonica player, but trying to translate the guitar lick. That was the best I could do on Clapton's lick. And oh man, how do I teach what I just did there? It's actually, it's a little tricky. It's actually kind of hard to describe. It's, they're just notes on the harp. So I'm gonna go real slow and I'm gonna tell you to pay attention to the ch ch because what I'm doing is I'm breathing out and I'm getting a kind of um, a fricative, what's it called? It's like when you make a sound with your mouth, linguists have all these strange terms. Um, you make, it's raining, it's sad, bluesy, okay. You make these sounds with your mouth. Let me do bars 9, 10, 11, and 12 again, slowly. And so the beat is... One, two, three. I went down to the crossroads. That's right. That's how it goes. All right. So if we put this back together, let's do, let's do it. I'll do the whole thing at that kind of some slow tempo and then I'll do it full speed or I'll do it a little faster in full speed. So here's slow. Crossroads, try to flag a ride. All right, so the, you know, the trick is not doing it at slow tempo. The trick is doing it and get it all right and having it be within your technical capacity at a fast tempo. Let me see if I can do it at a fast tempo. Two, three, two. Cry. 
crossroads, try to fly the ride. I went down to the crossroads, tried to fly the ride. Well, no one seemed to know me, everybody passed me by. I went down to the crossroads, fell down on my knees. Now, and by the way, I'm playing on that stock harp. Man, it would have been a whole lot easier if I was playing on the uh, Joe Spire Special. So, where's that? What did I do with that? Anyway, we'll have to let that go for next time. This is Dr. Gusso saying, I hope you enjoyed Crossroads Blues. Take a listen to it. It was fun. Not, you know, it's just one guy in a recording studio. We love the blues, don't we? We love the blues because they fill us with energy, life force, and you know it's going to be all right this year. As crazy as it's going to get in 2020, Americans, we know we're going to make it. We are going to make it. Okay? See you down the road. Bye-bye.